I believe that uh, the, the committee chose uh, the work that I had done in uh, exoastronomy. I was, uh, I started very early on uh, in the space physics program. Uh, this was 59, which was reasonably early. And uh, I was given the opportunity to fly rockets to look for X-ray stars, which were not known to exist. And the luck comes in in finding the first one, and the reason why it was lucky was that it was extremely interesting and that it was different from anything which had been thought to be there. And so it was lucky because it was a thousand times more brighter in X-rays than the sun at all wavelength. And also it emitted more X-rays by a thousand fold than visible light, which is not what happens on Earth when you take an X-ray machine. Most of the energy goes in heat. But this star is in a, it was the most efficient X-ray. Uh, so, a new class of objects and a new physical processes. What I brought to the uh, Space Telescope was a point of view uh, which was useful, which I had gained in X-ray astronomy until then. And that was that uh, uh, to be an X-ray astronomer, you had to explain what you were doing to a number of astronomers who knew nothing about X-rays or uh, didn't know how to uh, analyze the data, calibrate the data, and so forth. And um, so we applied the, the methodology that we had developed to make this uh, data understandable to other astronomers to the Space Telescope. And of course, everybody thought that they knew how to analyze data in uh, the optical domain and UV domain. But the fact of the matter is the Space Telescope produced data at an enormous rate. And so we had to change how we uh, looked at the data from uh, Hubble and uh, make it very, very fast. We analyze the data in real time. We calibrated the data for the viewer, and then we put them in huge archives so that, first of all, the, 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 the observer would get it, but then within a year, the whole world would get it. And this created a, a, a big difference then in, in uh, the way people perceived astronomy, the educational impact of what was going on, the research, productivity and so forth. First of all, it's very important that we understand that even when they are in space, the money for these telescopes is spent on the ground and is spent to pay for uh, engineers, scientists, students to learn and so forth. So there is a tremendous uh, technological return from all of this. And uh, the second thing is uh, that, uh, you know, I don't think we should, we need to justify it on the basis of practical result. I mean, after all, not only of bread uh, leaveth man. And uh, I think that uh, uh, these are the new cathedrals we are building in the modern age. Uh, they, I call them the cathedrals of the mind. So you could ask, well, what was the point of uh, building Okay, I, I will use the following example. The amount of effort to build Hubble is the same as the amount of effort to build a average cathedral. That one took 100 people, 100 years, and this one took uh, 1,000 people, 10 years. It turns out the product, the many years is the same. So the cost, or cathedral and these things are, is the same. And you can ask the same questions in both cases. <laughs> well, I think that the one that comes to mind is I did my thesis work on uh, at the foot of the Matterhorn. There was a uh, hut uh, where we're doing uh, cosmic ray research at uh, 3,500 meters and um, it was interesting and, uh, and long. I spent two years up there. And uh, these cosmic ray particles are very rare. So I started thinking about how could I possibly 
concentrate them on my detector so that I could uh, get on with my thesis work and finish it. The Big Bang was predicted, but uh, unless you could uh, invent inflationary expansion, it wouldn't work. So it is easy to have a kind of a general idea. I mean, for instance, Einstein uh, uh, considered the possibility of a cosmological constant and then rejected it. Okay, the idea of having negative gravity, he didn't like. And so he rejected it and then it turns out that yes, you must take it into account. And so it's, uh, it's not like, uh, you know, nobody's stupid here. I mean, the people uh, <laughs> like Einstein were. Uh, but I, I think we now are overwhelmed with data. And we need another Einstein or another Newton to come up with the next generalization, uh, the next really unifying theory. This is not the first time. And uh, I found it useful, let me put it this way, it's, it's, it's some way to give back. Uh, I've had many, many opportunities, so I would like to give back a little.